Adam Morrison here. When it comes to top-tier contracting, my go-to choice is McGilvery Environmental. They're not just any contractor. They're the best in Spokane and North Idaho. With years of experience, they handle it all. New construction, meticulous repairs, and asphalt overlays. From start to finish, they ensure your project is completed with the highest quality and results. And here's the scoop for this year. McGilvery Environmental has expanded its services to include asphalt paving. That means top-notch commercial parking lots, residential driveways, and road construction. So, ready to kickstart your project? Reach out to Kip at McGilvery Environmental by calling 208-556-6384 for your free estimate. Don't forget to mention my name, Adam from the Perimeter, and experience the difference that McGilvery Environmental brings to the table. Again, that's 208 556 6384 McGilvery Environmental. My number one choice for all my contracting needs. HDG Architecture is proud to be a sponsor of The Perimeter with Adam Morrison. There is another podcast that you all should be listening to, and it's called If Not Now, When. This podcast, which Josh Hassong of HDG Architecture hosts, has a clear mission to ignite positive change within the Spokane community. On the podcast, Josh brings together diverse individuals from city officials, business owners, journalists, influencers, and big thinkers to have meaningful conversations about what we can do to help transform downtown Spokane into an even more vibrant and robust community. By talking to these movers and shakers, the podcast aims to inspire and empower its listeners by actively shaping their city's future. You can find the If Not Now When podcast wherever you are listening to The Perimeter at, or you can find it in the description of this episode. Welcome back to The Perimeter, Season 3, presented by McGilvery Environmental. It's good to be back I'm here with Brendan, the producer. Um, a long time. It's, yeah, since uh, since the end of uh, last season, since the uh, Elite Eight. Yeah, no, it's uh, it feels good to be back. Obviously, they had craziness in the kennel. What was it uh, last Saturday? Yeah, today's. We're month. recording this on the tenth. Uh, that was on like the the sixth or seventh. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the the reason we wanted to start the show. Obviously, uh, it's getting to be college basketball. It's halfway through football season. Everybody's getting geared up for. Um, you know, especially in this in, in this market for uh, Gonzaga basketball, so we kind of wanted to give a little season recap and then get my thoughts uh, on season going forward, schedule, players that departed, new players, ton of new faces on this Gonzaga team. I think it's going to be a theme every single year. In you know, with transfer portals and NIL, I think it's mm. something that. Uh, will be hard to get used to at, at first, but then it'll become, uh, you know, kind of happenstance or however, however you want to put it, the normal, normal behavior of elite programs being able to go pick off some of the best transfers in the portal and then obviously getting high-level recruits. But the, the flip side of that is you're going to have guys that, um, if you don't make them happy every year, they can just leave. So um, I was going to ask, like, you were, this is our the, the third year of the transfer portal, mm -hmm. and yeah, what are your feelings on it? Like, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, I think it's fair, uh, for just uh, any profession. Now, I know it's student athlete, but now with NIL, it's like, well, you kind of got to throw that some of that out the door, and, and, and a lot of things come along with that. I think critique, mm. uh, uh, critiquing of players if they're getting paid opens the door a little bit more but i think it's fair if you're 18 and older and you're working in any profession you should you should have a right to move anywhere you want right, right. obviously mm -hmm. freedom of movement and that's you know just kind of a cornerstone of like human behavior you should be able to go where you kind of want to go within reason obviously of exceptions but in a free society you should be able to move if something is not working in your favor mm -hmm. you should be allowed to 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 change that situation mm. but the, the backside of it is I think we do, it turns into a little bit of like a minor league feel. And that has a little bit to do with NIL, but players leaving so much. Mm. Like we played Grand Canyon last year, I think I was believing the NCAA tournament. And there was a kid that was on a sixth school. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I, there has to be some level of, all right, 
you have to stay you get one freebie i think the rule is actually now you get one freebie and then you have to file for your next one but all you have to claim is like hardship mm. so how do you just prove it and one of the things is and and i don't want it just taken the wrong way but like you can just say like mental health right nothing wrong with that but also like that gets abused too just right. like anything else mm -hmm. so I, i'm on the fence about it it benefits our program but also it 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 has a little bit of decline for the the popularity of the sport or for people to latch on to teams because it used to be you know you got a good class or you got a, a good two classes you know let's say you, two really good players in one and two really good in the other so that you know if they're freshmen and sophomores you used to be like all right and two, three years, let's see how far they can go. We can maybe win a national championship and you grasp on to a mm, team easier mm -hmm. to follow. Now, I mean, I'm not even joking. Like, and I went to the the craziness in the kennel. I went to practice the day before, but like I had to get like a sheet and I'm like, I don't even know, like mm. so 80 of these kids, I don't even have no clue who they are, mm -hmm. which is crazy that to is, even think, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. like, it's, it's just how it is now. So again, I, I'm not... 100% against it but also like you can't just say it's the greatest thing because it also allows the rich to stay richer and you know you always heard that you know the, the improper balance in college athletics and this has to do with NIL but it's also like okay so if you're like in the big sky like steel venters for example mm. so player of the year the big sky goes to eastern and we just take their best player <laughs> Mm -hmm. right you know yeah. what i'm saying and like so if you're like in the big sky the big south whatever whack like a lot of those better kids just go to these bigger programs so then if you're those coaches like how do you keep them happy in those smaller programs that don't have nil don't have the following but it's like you don't want to like finish out your career and, and i don't know yeah because like smaller schools getting to the tournament is like is a really big deal for them monetarily yeah, yeah monetarily yeah 100 yeah no yeah. It, it, the units and all that stuff that that delves into every you know every time you go to the ncaa tournament the conference gets a unit or whatever it's called a, mm. a, and then they divvy it out between the conferences and the team or the, the the teams in the conference and then the team that usually gets a little bit more that was the team that went but it's a really big deal. Like it floats those smaller programs probably for a couple of years, mm -hmm. pays a lot of bills or allows them to pay, you know, another assistant or strength coach or something like that. So I don't know, man, it, it really is. It's confusing to watch some of the, you know, all the transfers and, and grads and stuff, but it helps us. So I can't really say I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Totally. But, but also it's like, it's, it makes it tough because you have to, you have to kind of re-recruit your guys every year. You have to be worried that they're going to leave. I mean, last year we had Efton Reed left after mm -hmm. one year. Yeah, Dominic Harris left, which I that that felt like more like a a, a, tr a traditional transfer. Didn't play for two years, got hurt for one. Highly touted, good player. Go go somewhere else, go play, and go enjoy basketball. You're too good to not play, but you're not going to play here. Right, no, nothing wrong with that. It wasn't a character thing or anything like that. It just didn't work out. Same thing with Hunter, though. You know, like you were actually in the rotation. Yeah. And he was going to play a ton, I think, this year because that wing spot opened up. That's like Steele and Dusty Stromer will get into the, the, the new personnel, but he would have been a for, for sure starter this year, mm -hmm. probably played 25 minutes at least yeah. a night. So, you know, that stuff is always puzzling. Um, but it was puzzling too to see where he went because, like, I, know. I, <laughs> it, I thought it was going to be like, omaha or creighton or, yeah or, you know what i'm saying or nebraska yeah you know what i'm saying like those are decent program creighton's obviously good but mm -hmm. like those other ones are not terrible either and like, bigger names but wake forest used to be good yeah that's true it's i guess ACC, i guess so it's still good it's i guess like the nil there is probably good for him i just yeah i definitely still think he had a role in this team and, and to see role. him yeah, yeah. would have had a huge role mm -hmm. so it, it is fascinating um but yeah, so transfer portal, NIL, all that stuff is, is I think the NIL stuff will start leveling off um, here shortly because it's probably year three of it, right? Year yeah, three. three. Yeah, mm -hmm. year three of it. And eventually, unless you're like a Caleb Williams or like a Zion Williamson, <clears throat> you know, it, at Duke, when I'm talking to college basketball reference, 
I don't think like the money is is life changing, but maybe it is for some people. But like, if I'm a parent, this is just me. If I'm a parent, I have a kid that's gonna go somewhere else that might not be a better situation for them, sport wise, emotionally, uh, you know, uh, culturally, whatever. Over like fifty thousand more dollars a year, like you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Now I understand that like pays for a lot of things. Not count, you know, you you're getting a scholarship. I get that. So then it really is a free ride completely. You know, you don't have to buy whatever mm -hmm. food and everything. But still, like it it it's going to get to a point where it's like, do you want to go somewhere for for the experience, the culture, or is it just simply about dollars? Mm. so i don't know yeah. it'll turn into minor league sports <laughs> i mean that's quick. what it feels like it's becoming so i mean just just you know. by the tra just by the transfer portal i mean we, i forget who it was but wasn't there a guy that transferred to gonzaga and then transferred out yeah and, the marcus uh, marcus yeah. marcus adams or i don't even i didn't even get his name yeah after <laughs> I, I saw he came there everybody celebrated and then he left again yeah so i don't i don't know the story and i honestly and if i did i I would tell it, but I had, I have no clue how mm -hmm. that what that went down. But he would, didn't even step foot on campus, essentially, basically. So mm -hmm. it's not even worth our you know our listeners' time to go over it. But the perimeter will be right back after a word from our sponsor. Hi, we're the Greens. Our family is just like any other family. Quiet on set. Okay, maybe not, but just like every family. We need banking solutions that work for the way we live. And ICCU has everything we need. We're looking forward to showing you how it works for us. Excuse me. Going into this season, we have to kind of talk about what players left and what's trying to replace them. Obviously, Drew Timmy drafted the NBA, actually had a game winner the other night in mm. a preseason game or a, a putback that ended up being the winner. So congrats to him playing with the Bucks. 21 points a game or 20 points a game last year, you know, all-time Gonzaga's leading scorer. Probably th for three years of that four was the main focus offensively. Um, and then Julian Strother getting drafted by the Denver Nuggets, which I think is a fantastic spot for him to land. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's 20 points. I think Julian was at close to 15. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at 35, 36, 37 points a night on a team that scores around, I think we were around 80 or high 70s last year. You know, um, that's a lot to replace. Um, so it'll be fascinating to see where we get those points for. We obviously talked about Hunter Silas leaving. Great defender, only averaged four. So like if you're looking from a scoring aspect, would have had a great role this year, but uh, you know, when when he left, I had to calm some people down. Like, dude, he averaged four points, played 17 minutes. Doesn't mean he was terrible, but like, it's not. It's, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it, it's okay. You know, I mean, we'll find somebody. It's, I mean, um, you know, and then Dom, Dom Harris, obviously, I think him leaving was the right choice for him just in his career. Um, but it's it kind of weird when they can transfer within conference. That would yeah. just be his. So he's going to LMU now. So that'd be interesting to see how that works out. But good for him. Beautiful campus. Mm -hmm. Obviously, LA's fantastic. You know, Efton is going to Wake Forest with Hunter Silas. Kind of just didn't fit. I think game wise, didn't fit here. Um, back to the basket, guys. Unless you're really dynamic, it's hard for you to play at this in this system. Mm hmm. So that makes sense for him to leave. And then obviously Malachi Smith was one that I think a lot of people were hoping was going to stay mm -hmm. um, for that extra COVID year. Um, fantastic guard. I thought I had a great year off the bench. Saved us in a, a few games last year. Um, really productive. I thought another year of college basketball probably would have served him well. Um, but, you know, obviously he makes the right, you know, he made the decision that he wanted to make and I wish him all the best. And I think he'll have a chance to play professionally nba or, or somewhere but i think mm -hmm. one more year would have helped but that's that's just me speaking out loud um you know then we we, we lose for sure bolton to um you know graduated graduation i think he's playing somewhere so yeah i mean that's a ton of guys obviously julian and, and drew were the most um productive Rashir was your secondary ball handler your speed guy that's gonna hurt and very experienced um so yeah, it'll be interesting um, to see where those voids get filled. 
I think bringing in Brian Nemhard was a fantastic addition um, from Creighton. Obviously, mm-hmm. Andrew, his brother, played here, had a great, I think it was two-year career here, um, ends up getting um, drafted by the Pacers, and I think he made the most. Oh, he got the highest contract of a second-round pick ever, like guaranteed, like first contract. So, like, he obviously made an impression, and I think Ryan is exactly like his brother, and I mean that in a nice way, just like two inches shorter. <laughs> like that's all it is. Yeah, like, they play the same way. I think Ryan can score it a little bit better, but obviously he doesn't have the size. But they're like fantastic. Ryan's really good off pick and roll. He's really quick. Um, like I said, I think he shoots a little bit better. I think just Andrew is just more solid, I guess. But you're going to get the same production and downhill play and good decision making that Andrew gave. And I'm going to do my very best this year not to call him <laughs> Andrew on the air. And then, you know, after this episode, maybe once more, I'll stop comparing him to his brother just out of respect. You know what I'm saying? He's obviously his own player, but it's like, ooh, a Nemhard, awesome. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's going to really help us. And what I think that'll do is put Nolan Hickman off the ball. And I mean that in the nicest way, but it'll alleviate some pressure for him as far as always trying to make the right decision and play. He is a good decision maker, but I think now he can play more free and try to score the basketball. It's That's when we had Nigel and Josh Perkins. When Nigel came in, Josh Perkins got to move off the ball. Mm-hmm. And I think it was it benefited Josh a lot and it benefited our crew. Um, that was one of our best teams, obviously, and we got to – get up and down i think it's going to be similar to that where we have two really quick uh, guards on the on the perimeter and i think nolan's big enough he's six three to be a small two mm-hmm. um and then you know if there's foul troubles he can go back to playing the one so i think it's a, a brilliant uh move for us to uh um, you know and try to incorporate those two um guards now it, it must be said like there's still some feeling out that has to happen because you got to see how it looks on the court i thought it looked all right and craziness to kennel but they played opposite of each other um you know nemhard and hickman i'm talking about our backcourt so Mm -hmm. uh i'm excited for the the fact of it but also um you know it, it it looks good on paper but it still has to you know materialize on the court the third the wing spot is the one that's the most curious for me um we mentioned Steel Venters that came over from Eastern last year, Big Sky Player of the Year. They had that crazy ass win streak, and then they lost in their tournament, their conference tournament. Um, but very good year, very good career at uh, Eastern. Played at El- played in Ellensburg. I don't know whatever high school that was, but so quote unquote a local kid, which is local in my mind. Um, he's going to get the nod, I think, at the perimeter spot. Um, stretch the floor shooter um kind of creates his own shop and not great but will benefit from playing with a better personnel mm. um the the hardest thing i think for him is going to be on the defensive end and can he maintain um you know like a scoring prowess doesn't mean you have to make all your shots but if it's only judged on how you make shots then it really gets it can be tough mm-hmm. um, because if you're not productive on the defensive end and then like on the glass, then when you go one for five, then people start going, well, somebody else should play. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like the point I'm trying to get at is he needs to make sure that he's um, productive in all areas to solidify that starting spot. Um, I think Dusty Stromer is going to back him up in that two, three area. Um, highly touted um recruit out of notre dame high school in wherever the hell I think LA. It's Cal- yeah in yeah, la yeah yeah la outside of la got a lot of pub they used to play sierra canyon with brownie james mm. lebron james son so my daughter's 15 and my nephew's 16 and they know like a ton about dusty stromer he's on all the fucking like literally house of high like all the time huh all of that stuff like he has a huge huge like 
10 to like 20 year old following it's weird that is, that is weird <laughs> and that's not a knock on him but like he's like super popular yeah and so that makes um, me feel old <laughs> i know i just i the same here man. i'm almost 40 so i'm just like jesus um but he's obviously good enough to play gonzaga mm -hmm. and i'm just the only concern i have is just that if he's not like starting right away mm. and having that like not hype but did, he didn't he didn't do it to himself you know what i'm saying so like i always kind of like have to pump the brakes when you de describe it that way but like the expectations i guess is he going to get frustrated or is it going to be viewed as a as a down i don't know what his you know circles like you know because sometimes you have to like you don't you know, you don't do whatever like the player, the the circle wants you to do, but you have to remember that they could transfer and they're high level recruits and mm -hmm. they play play on a really good AU team. And if you mess one of those kids up, you ain't getting the ones that are coming right after. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, you, there's a finesse part that you have to do, and it doesn't mean you you know like if they're not productive, you still play them. But like, you there's some little things that you can kind of control to make sure. Um, you keep those type of players happy. So I think he will be battling steel for that that wing spot, the three spot. Mm -hmm. I think he'll have a fair shot to try to win it, but I think Steele, as being a veteran, gets the nod early. Now, Dusty can play the point guard position or like the small, you know, secondary ball handler. He's 6'7". He's deceptively long, 6'6". Six, six. So I think he will be in the rotation for that, wing and then third ball handler because gonzaga always plays three guards three or four perimeters and then three bigs mm -hmm. you know and they've done that for 10 years they used to not do that but it's a good way to like manage minutes it's it's an easier way with depth to keep guys happy and then you shorten the rotations but it just i prefer like when i coach now i try to sub that way mm. i try to have a team like that it's so much easier because then everybody plays like 22 minutes 18 minutes like so then there's no real complaining like, right yeah oh, you all played pretty well you played pretty close to the same amount you know what i'm saying yeah, it's very you, fair <laughs> it, it is fair but then you can and then you can mismatch lineups really easier i don't know it's just an easier way to do it but my point is i think stromer will be in that three three spot and then obviously can play the one or the two mm -hmm. um the Luca kid, Kren, I'm just uh, Krinovich, I think is yeah. how you say Krinovich. I thought he was impressive. On um, he's from Zagreb, Croatia. He's from our. Uh, I thought he was fantastic in the craziness in the kennel. Actually, had a good good uh, stat line: four or five, eleven points, two rebounds. He played all twenty minutes of the half, or the one half, or whatever they did. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he'll, he's an interesting one too. He's got decent size. He played professionally over there. I got to word this the right way. I got to make sure I got to say it. But like, I've played with a lot of Eastern Europeans. Obviously, I played overseas. I played in Serbia, mm -hmm. obviously in the NBA and in Europe. They're always tough. And they're always like really fundamental. Mm. It's a stereotype, but it's so true. And I think he's exactly what like an Eastern European kid would be. Yeah. Super tough super smart team first extremely fundamental and like he'll just like kind of put his head down and tell, he'll do whatever you tell him to do so i think he's gonna have a legitimate chance to play that third guard spot too i was like really impressed i watched him in practice um not you know like not lightning quick not ex extremely athletic but like got to the right spots made shots um those Eastern European kids too, and European players, they play pick and roll and space way earlier than mm. American kids. So they understand the flow action that we run, high ball screen, dribble handoffs, cuts. Mm -hmm. They understand that it's, 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 it's an easier thing for them to um, address and figure out earlier. So I think he's going to have a chance to play. Mm -hmm. if, if he doesn't play, I would love to see him redshirt and stick around mm. because i think he's really talented i was really impressed but again i'm going small sample size i gotta be honest with the listeners i saw him at practice for 30 minutes and then he had a good night but craziness but i'm going off of play with a lot of eastern european uh, yeah. you know the croatians serbians 
Serbia, Montenegro, Bosnians. I've played with those guys, and they're always like tough and yeah, they're always solid. You know, just solid every yeah. time. And he had a he had a bit of swag too. I felt like yeah. he had, oh, I, exactly. I, I, I liked his attitude when he was on the court. He 100%. he played with uh with a lot of he, he just you could just tell he had experience. Yeah, I yeah. think I think playing professionally, obviously would help anybody but mm. i think those kids uh, they just grow up playing a, a, a the style like a pro style and i've talked about it in the first two seasons that we play uh, uh, way earlier so the, the the learning curve is is not as big mm-hmm. so i think you'll have a, an opportunity and fewy loves solid players obviously i mean mm-hmm. that's not a <laughs> nice take <laughs> But like he, I mean, especially at point guard position, if you're not going to turn the ball over, and you're going to make the right decisions, mm-hmm. um, he, you'll find a way to play. Mm-hmm. Um, we all obviously talked about Dusty. I thought he's, you know, he's got an opportunity to play. Um, I was really impressed with Braden Huff, kid out of Illinois, lefty. He was Illinois Player of the Year, I think, whatever, two years ago, three years ago, mm-hmm. probably six ten. Kind of looks kind of not like a basketball player besides the height body wise and i mean mm-hmm. that in a nice way but he just doesn't look like he's kind of like drew he's kind of like drew totally you know, yeah where you're just like this guy can hoop and then you see him you're like yeah he obviously can hoop but he's not going to jump out of the gym um i heard really good things all summer from multiple people that he was the one you know in the gym the most working his tail off i heard good things last year they had a great red shirt year and nobody red shirts anymore mm-hmm. so it was kind of cool to see somebody be like hey man i'm playing behind drew timmy efton at the time anton and then ben Gregg's like why would i why should i waste a year i'm just gonna go like red shirt like nobody does that that's true yeah so i was actually like cool man like and being like the illinois player of the year i bet you like back home people were like you should have went to illinois you would have played You're mm-hmm. like, you idiot you know that's hard to do um and he looked fantastic and craziness kind of looked good in practice can stretch the floor like i said 610 lefty which is harder to guard um great touch like i said really impressive though the weaknesses i think is not a probably not a great rim protector mm-hmm. just because you can't leap um, mm-hmm. you could still be there body wise it's not about just blocking shots make guys miss but uh, you know just from a leaping ability is not fantastic i think in some of their ball screen coverages, you know, they like to switch. I've talked about that a lot in the last seasons. Um, if he can't handle the ball screen coverages, that'll he'll struggle with that. But I think um, he's going to play a ton for this crew, whether it be starting, obviously, with Anton or coming off the bench and playing that 18 to 25-minute a, a role for the bigs. Which mm-hmm. We've had plenty of guys do that off the bench as well. So really impressed with his game. Um the kid we didn't get to see was Graham EK. Heard great things. Had a great year at Wyoming two years ago. Was their leading scorer. Um, I think he won the Mountain West MVP or All Conference for sure. Average nineteen. Uh, was hurt, um, so he didn't play in the craziness. Obviously, I didn't see him in the um, at the practice either. I've heard great things. Like I said, left-handed. He's more of a back to the basket. Um, the comps I've heard was he's kind of like Sam Dower hmm. and uh, like what was the Serbian kid that just left Pavel, whatever his name was a few years ago. I don't remember his P- P- Petrosev. Oh, Petrosev. Yeah. Petrosev. So like, uh, you know, duck ins and stuff like that, like Petrosev used to do on the weak side. Um, you know, so we'll have to see on him, but mm-hmm. obviously if you're Mountain West, uh all conference you're a good player um my cousin actually plays football at wyoming so i was down there been down there for a couple years and i connected with their head coach and they'd love they had nothing but great things to say about him Mm. you know everybody down there yeah the assistants like oh man we were so sad that he left i'm glad he was going to gonzaga but he's Mm a great kid can you know great basketball player so really excited to see him go but obviously the lingering foot injury is is nerve-wracking um for him especially yeah. he's like dude you got to get in the lineup here but you know because there's a lot of talent and you're not a returning guy that has you know equity in mm-hmm. the bank so like you kind of have to get up to speed and get ready to go yeah when when i got to the kennel on saturday i saw his like line it was like he had 19 
almost 20 points a game yeah. and 10 rebounds per game. And, and I was, was like, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. And then they brought over a sheet saying, Graham E.K. is out. Yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I was like, I just, oh man. <laughs> they, do it, they do it late. It's, it's crafty. So, they, you know. Um, but yeah, that was the year they went to the NCAA tournament too, the, the, that season. So mm. it was, he wasn't doing 20 and 10 on, you know, on some garbage or right. on, a, on a bad team. That's a, that's a real thing too. People don't realize like, you know, you can, you see guys that put up numbers and the team's 12 and 18. It's like, well, it's not impactful. Usually it's not impactful or it's mm -hmm. not, you know, helping you win. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see him. He'll be competing for that five, you know, the center role, the five spot. Mm -hmm. Anton's the four, no doubt. Um, I think Anton's going to have another big year. I thought he was fantastic last year. Really, Absolutely, yeah. really made a jump. Looked good in the his line was pretty good wasn't it in the deal let's see here anton yeah it was four six 13 points actually led yeah he had 13 mm -hmm. um so played well um looks in shape looks to the part and hopefully he can have a big year i think he's an nba guy if he can like really put his head down and, and commit to it he can stretch the floor if he can make threes um if he can be like a lockdown defender which he's pretty good at um mm -hmm. You know, like he could find a role where he could be like a three and D guy, like honestly. So hopefully he has that type of year. I'm glad he came back and, um, you know, wish him all the best this season because he, he built, he's building on a great one last year. Uh, the kid from Korea, June. I think it's June Seok Yo. I think it is. Yeah, Seok Yo. I, I don't know how to say it. I, exactly, I was yeah. told it was like Yo, like in Yo MTV. Yeah, yo, uh -huh. Like, so like June Suck Yo. So like, and I'm not trying to. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, no. It's, I know it's exactly. It's yeah. like we're not here to, to to make fun of people's names and stuff. But at, when I first was saying it on the air, I'm like, can we just say yo? And it's like me and Huddy were like, yeah, we're just gonna say yo. Yo, yeah, that, so that, that works. <laughs> it works, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but um, I've heard good things about him too. Super strong, athletic. Obviously, the language barrier has been difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, context. Rui, obviously, I, I know Korea and Japan are different languages just right so, but that they there was that barrier mm -hmm. there as well and Rui's done fine right for you sure saying mm -hmm. got over it and then terminology is, is another issue obviously that comes with language but like you know usually like when i played over in europe like the terminology was kind of the same mm -hmm. you know the language mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying they'd still call a, a ball screen a ball screen in english right oh you know like they didn't, yes. they didn't say it in like yeah but like yeah. but it was still called a ball screen, a ball screen whether yeah. you said it in spanish or right. serving or not but it's still a ball screen mm -hmm. i think that has been different mm -hmm. as well um so i don't know i think he fits into that three four spot because he's super strong um but there's going to be somebody's going to be left out so i don't know how this how this works out yeah and, and that's the again I know we're kind of going long-winded on personnel, but this this first episode has to be on who and where do we think guys are going to play because there's so many open spots. And then we talked about the scoring discrepancies mm. or the scoring loss that we're leaving or losing from Drew, Timmy, and Julian and even like a Malachi last year. Uh, we're going to have to find scoring somewhere. And we've always been f excellent at it, especially in the last five, six, seven years we've been – top five in the country every year offensive efficiency which is you know something to hang your hat on but we can't just throw it to drew now and go all right go get a bucket and see right. how the double team comes and spray it out and we'll get wide open threes mm -hmm. so um i'm really curious to see you know how all these guys fit into the lineup and where the lineup goes because i think early fewy might play 10 guys and he doesn't usually do that he does a little bit early but and then it always whittles down, and I always call it seven and a half man rotation. Mm -hmm. Like you have eight, but you usually just play your seven, and then if you need that eighth guy, you'll play him short spurts late in the season. But it's like a seven and a half man rotation. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this year he's going to have to play ten to be fair and to kind of see, especially at the big spot. Like uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean the having drew we're having to replace drew obviously is big but like i don't even see like anyone back to the basket on this team like i think i think graham is it's graham is okay graham is they say he can make a 12 you know 12 to 18 foot jumper but they say he's like a duck in really strong guy mm -hmm. um so i think that'll help him get an opportunity to play because we do 
like our duck in guys mm-hmm. as much as we like to push the pace we do like to get angle easy ones mm-hmm. you know we've done that for years um but i mean ben greg has earned a spot last year you know he looked he looked solid in the craziness um so like he's he's gonna get first crack at a rotation spot mm-hmm. you know and then like i said Braden huff has a 19 in that deal yeah and he looks fantastic and he's been here a year even though he's a red shirt so he's gonna get a fair crack at it and so you're just like eh, you know somebody's not gonna play as much as they want totally so i i'm curious to see how it goes and how they manage the minutes i think it's it's a good problem to have obviously with depth mm-hmm. but also um there's gonna be there's gonna be a couple of pissed off players and families i think as the year progresses and that's just how it goes mm-hmm. I mean, it's the reality of sports it's the reality of high level sports that you may be good and sometimes it's just a number game it just happens yeah it's just not fair but it's like sometimes it's just a simple numbers play, like Hey kid, you could you you could go to Eastern or even Wazoo right now, and you'd be starting. But you just can't play here. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you're terrible. That's just a bad you know bad bad shake. Um, so yeah, I, I'm curious to see how Fuey does that. Genuinely excited about the personnel. The biggest thing, I'd, like I said, reverting back is the wing spot. I'm curious to see how that works, and then obviously how the the two guards work together. I think they'll be fine, but I think adding Ryan Nemhard is going to really help Nolan Hickman just on a, you know, scheme level, personal level. Um, it's going to allow him to like kind of free up and just play. And hopefully he takes that opportunity and, and runs with it and has a good, good year. He had an okay year last year, but he's going to have a big year. Mm-hmm. You know, if he's thinking just personally, it's like, all right, it's my junior year. I got a big year. Yeah. Um, so. The perimeter will be right back after a word from our sponsor. Hey, Greens. How's everything going today? Hey, Robert. We're good. Just checking in on that car loan we applied for. No worries. Let me pull that up. Yep. Looks like you're approved and all set. Hey, that's great news. So, you headed over to the dealership now? Yep. Just gotta make one stop first. And we got a great rate, too. You know, pretty excited. Um, great schedule this year. I mean, we go at Washington, which is, I know we've dominated that that uh, rivalry, but I'm glad that we're playing at the heck ed in, instead of like Climate Pledge for that game. Mm-hmm. Um, UConn at Seattle in Climate Pledge. That's great. Obviously, mm-hmm. a chance to... I don't know if you want to call it revenge from last year because <laughs> it's a new year, but that's that's a great um, you know series that they're starting up. I think is is fantastic. Um, obviously, going to Maui, but it's going to be in Honolulu. Um, it's going to be a great tournament. Open them with Purdue, and then it's Syracuse or Tennessee if we win that game. Wow! Then the other side is Kansas, Marquette, Chaminade, and I'm missing the other one, uh, UCLA. Oh, um, so it's. A really good field. They always go, it's the best ever you know, every single year. But it's a, it's a obviously a really good field. Uh, Purdue beat the pine tar out of us last year. Yeah. And so I'm curious to see how, because they have basically the same team. Zach Eady's back. And then those two, their backcourts guys that kind of kicked our butts last year were freshmen. Obviously, they're going to be sophomores this year. So I'm really curious to see how we handle Eady. Yeah, I mean, they killed us in that Portland game. It wasn't even close last year. Um, that's a tough matchup because you don't want to obviously lose any time. But if you lose that first Maui game, it takes kind of the wind out of the sails. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm curious to see how the, you know, where the I don't even know where the, the venue is. I imagine it's at University of Hawaii's gym, mm. but you're missing out on the the atmosphere. But obviously it was a tragedy over there so i'm just glad we're going to the islands yeah um and that it's still you know because there was talk of canceling it and then there was talk of maybe being in stateside right yeah they were going to try to they were going to cancel it which was totally understandable it's like this basketball is the last thing we need to be worrying about right Um, and and then they were talking about vegas and from a selfish standpoint i'm like god i gotta go to vegas again and i know that sounds funny and that's not even a joke but i've been to vegas like 40 times in my life just from hoops and (laughs) 
So it's just like, I'm just like, fuck, I'm over at Vegas. Yeah. Okay. Because we already go there for the WCC, which is fun. That's enough. But then we're going there December 2nd uh, versus USC. Mm -hmm. So I would have been like two straight weekends of, or two like long weeks of Vegas if they did it there. Mm -hmm. Because the COVID year, they did it in Vegas. That's why everybody thought. Because when St. Mary's finally gets to go to a big level tournament, it was in it was, it was in, in Vegas, Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> during COVID. That sucks, yeah. Um, but so yeah, it uh, I'm it, it's a really good you know preseason tournament, and, and like I said, I'm glad it's going over to the islands just because mm-hmm. it's it's just cool that they're keeping the event alive, and mm-hmm. um, and then we have a game at Kentucky in like February. Yeah. Which is odd, which is kind of <laughs> cool. We used to do those games in the middle of conference season because there was, when BYU left, there used mm. to be that odd week where you got a buy. Yeah. Or they gave you the opportunity to schedule. And that's when we played Memphis at Memphis, my junior year. Mm. I think we played Oklahoma State. That might have been there in that time too. Mm-hmm. My sophomore year in in oklahoma city so like i think it's just cool because it gives you an opportunity to get a super high level game and out of conference and then it's like it can be like a seed mover right Mm -hmm. let's say you're a four three or two or a one yeah um it can move you up or down the line if you win that game you know it kind of helps your resume yeah which is all which is something that gonzaga doesn't always have in the season so yeah no yeah. exactly so, so. It, i think it's a it's a great schedule pepperdine at the spokane arena i think is a good ad i mm. know it's it's a not a marquee matchup but i think still having a game there after the kentucky game last year mm-hmm. the building was did you go to that game last yeah, year yeah i did yeah yeah the building was electric it was amazing yeah and it was just great and it it was kind of nice to see like fans with beers in their hands. Yeah. You know, have them at the <laughs> McCarthy <laughs> totally. Center. So, like, you could just feel the atmosphere. And it's not just based off alcohol, but like, you could tell that there was a lot of people there that don't get to go to Gonzaga mm-hmm. games that were there. Yeah. And they were genuinely excited to be at a game. Yeah. And so, I think having games there is great. You know, the story why we stopped having games there is so we used to have them there once a year. Yeah. What was this? We used to play WSU, right? We, was- well, we used to play, we played Eastern. Oh, it was multiple games, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we played Eastern, we played Georgia. They might have played WSU there before I got there as mm. well. Mm-hmm. But the how it went down, we played WSU there, but it was their game. Oh, right. Uh, that was... That was, yeah, that was way before. That was like when I was in high when we were in high school, I no, think. No, but they, they did play WSU when it was their game, okay. too, like mm-hmm. in 2016 or 15 or something like that, mm-hmm. 14. But anyway, do you remember that year that Memphis came in? I think it was 07, 08. Mm-hmm. And, and beat us with Calipari's team. Yeah, uh, a few, and we, I think we shot like 25%, and he just, stupid arena, you can't <laughs> shoot in it, and all that stuff. Um, that's where it kind of started. Yeah. And, and in fairness to him, I'm not going to throw him completely under the bus, is like it counts as a home game and it takes away from your student section. Mm -hmm. So I obviously too, I'm like, okay, I, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, so in totality, I'm glad we're back in the arena, but hopefully they, they find another marquee matchup like Mm -hmm. they did with Kentucky or say call. I would like them to do, but they would never do it. I think Arizona would be fantastic, but it's too many brotherhoods. Totally. Yeah. But that, that was the one where it was like, this is a great rivalry and let's play each other, you know, blah, blah, blah. But they seem to play Michigan State secretly every year. Maybe they could just make that game. I, into... don't, I don't know if Huey likes to play Izzo <laughs> because he always, they, they're just tough. Like we yeah. barely beat them last year in the yeah. aircraft game. Mm-hmm. And they, they're always a good program, but they're just, they're hard out. Yeah. Because they just, they try to punk you and blah, blah, blah. But I think it's a great balanced schedule. Mm-hmm. And there's enough good ones. There's enough. Well, not cupcakes, but there's enough that you can get your guys in and, and make them feel good about themselves and get some wins. And yeah, you know, there's a formula to this. People always oh, there should be more high level games. Like, yeah, but there's a formula to get seeds and there's a formula to like, you do realize like guys, I'm just assuming, but I know I'm right. I'm sure. There's like a 20 win mark. There's a 25 win bonus. There's a 30 win bonus. <laughs> yep. On your schedule, you know, on your uh-huh. contract. 
Okay, so let's make sure. Yeah, like... it's definitely. I mean, we, and we also have San Diego State as well. Oh yeah, at home. Think, at home, yeah, San yeah. Diego State's a very good program. Yeah, I mean, we played in the national championship game last year, so and they could be ranked by the time we're playing them in December. They probably so. will be, and yeah. they're another club that gets a gazillion transfers every year, and so yeah. they they you know slow slow build um into the season. So yeah, uh, that was great, uh, a great uh, schedule, and looking forward to it, and um. You know, hopefully we start off strong. The biggest one, obviously, is, you know, getting into that Maui tournament and, and playing well in that. Obviously, you want to win that. But if you can get at least to the championship game and, and most likely play a Kansas or UCLA in that game would be um, good for the brand and seeding and win or lose. But I think it's going to be a fun year on just kind of what ifs, man. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... It's crazy how many like new faces there are and guys that are quote unquote kind of established out of their programs and then high level recruits, but you don't know until the lights come on, man. Yeah. You just really don't. And um so I'm kind of fascinated. I'm a little bit more intrigued than I have been in years past. And that's just not pumping up the first season or first episode of season three. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we have no idea what's where the scoring is gonna come from. Or there's, you know, yeah, who's well, going to like dominate the ball? Can the the kid from Eastern play? And mm-hmm. the kid behind him that's got all the hype play? You know, you're just <laughs> like, shit. It's a lot of a lot of what ifs, man. It's pretty cool. The the yo kid from South Korea, like, I there was a lot of hype for him coming in, and I'm like watching the videos of him. He was like playing against Chet Holmgren and like mm-hmm. like playing really well like scoring i think like he scored 29 points in a game against him and mm-hmm. uh, against uh usa usa and i yeah i'm very it is very like there's so many players that could that we don't know right now that could be the star of this team and come three months from now yeah yeah i am 100 like it, it really is like head scratchers on the lineup mm-hmm. not in a bad way but like i wonder what Phoebe's gonna do here in the staff and then um you know the the backcourt situation, like two really good ball handlers, but mm-hmm. you know one's kind of taking a, a different role, and like I said, the wing position, and then Anton's a great inside player, but he's kind of like a stretch guy. So it's like, who's going to get that back to the basket? Mm-hmm. Is it Huff or is it Ek? Yeah, I don't think Ben Gregg's a back to the basket guy. He's a pick and pop dude, which is not a bad thing, but. So who is it? Does he back up Anton and then those two back each other up? Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I don't know, man. I, I'm, like I said, I'm really intrigued. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's fascinating. It's it's going to be another fun year. I like when it's like this, personally. I mm-hmm. liked it last year, too, when it was kind of like, how is Drew going to do? And and then who else is going to pick up the slack? You know what I mean? I, I like that aspect. Um, and then we had, you know, we had some up and downs last year. Fifteen, remember when we were fifteen and five, and everybody lost their minds? <laughs> yes, I do. And then we end up being thirty and six or whatever it yeah. was, you know, and go to the lead eight and lose to the national championship winner, you know, mm-hmm. like buzz saw, like ran it, like every they were buzz saw on everybody. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I just uh, I'm really excited for this year. Um, you know, as the show goes on, we'll do our recaps, obviously and predictions or and recaps and then and what's coming down the road Mm -hmm. um you know and then we'll get some interviews going like we did a little bit last year we'll try to get some of the players on if we can yeah Uh, i i I was gonna shout out i was very excited to see zach norvell jr on the on the coaching staff on the coaching staff yeah maybe we'll get snacks on yeah um you know i but he would actually be a good one to pick his brain as far as like from a younger player's perspective Mm -hmm. on um, you know, how the guys are, are the new guys are doing and stuff like that. Cause it's hard to get like Steven and, and Michelson to talk about that stuff. Not in a bad way. It's not like they're just, you know, very right. jerks, but it's just not their wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really excited again to the new season. Thank you to McGillivray environmental for sponsoring us. Um, there's other sponsors are going to have ads as well. Um, so it, it'll be a, a fun year. We'll try to keep up to speed. We'll try to be productive for people that are listening to understand. I'm teasing, maybe talking about lines and stuff like that. Mm. I don't know yet. If we get enough feedback from 
you know, our social media pages and, yeah. and, and you know, like on the YouTubes and all that stuff that comment or whatever yeah. emails. If people want me to talk about the gambling aspect of it, I will. Yeah. Um, I'm not an expert. I don't bet on the games, but I know it's part of in consuming sports now. Mm -hmm. And and some people want, might want that, uh, my thoughts on it. Like, because I can... There, well, there was I, multiple times last year, too, when the line was, like, set. And and I, I remember talking about it, and it would be like, and they hit it within, like, a point. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane. And it was just like... The hard, college basketball is really hard yeah. because... Like Gonzaga's line, let's just it's just completely hypothetical. And let's say it's twenty two against Pepperdine, mm -hmm. and you're like, man, that's a big, that's a huge line. You're like, <laughs> yeah. man, you want to bet Pepperdine? You're like, come on, Pep. And then we'll get up thirty with eight minutes to go, and you're like, Gonzaga's going to cover, man. Holy cow! And then this is what always <laughs> happens, okay? And then the 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 end of the bench walk on guys come in, yeah. And then it closes, and then you're sitting there sweating out if, like, <laughs> you know, a little used walk on is going to make a free throw with like 30 seconds left, and it's usually one or two points, and you're like, Vegas is they're geniuses, yeah. But it's so hard because there's that five five six minute window in blowouts where they'll play guys that don't get to play a lot, and it closes, man. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I'll you know, I always look at the lines just because I'm curious. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, Huddy and I just off air, we're like, you know, I'll write it down on a piece of paper, like 22 and a half. And then you'll be looking at me like 20 and you just like, you just shake your head, but not say anything. We're like, unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's, unbel it's yeah. so hard to do. It college basketball is hard. Yeah. I don't, I, I would give people my opinion, especially on West Coast conference games. Um, but I, like I said, the ones where the line is like so big, it's so mm -hmm. it's sweat. It's just a sweat fest, man. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I have buddies that do it, and I'm like, how could you bet like a thirty point cover? Right, That's crazy. It is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. And then like, what if a guy for their team goes off and like you still blew him out by like nineteen, but it's not even close to the line. You know, the yeah. thirty point cover. That's why it's such a variable. It is such a variable. I, yeah, I would. Uh, I've never actually bet on sports. I've never bet. I've never bet a dollar legally on sports. Yeah, like on in the DraftKings. Like I've obviously played uh, the the NCA pools. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I mean. Right. Or like, hey, hundred bucks on the Super Bowl or something. Right. Like that. But I've never like went to a cage and paced. Actually, that's not true. I bet on Chelsea to win the Premier League. When I was in Vegas one time, and, it, and they finished like eighth that year, so it was a <laughs> terrible bet. But I was, oh, I'll throw a hundred bucks. That's right, mm -hmm. one of those you buy at the start of the year and hope. You know, totally. So yeah. Anyway, thank you again for McGilvery Environmental for sponsoring us. Uh, keep listening. Uh, let us know if there's any feedback you want on the show, mm -hmm. any topics. Um, shoot us an email. Shoot us a you know comment or whatever in a DM, and we'll we'll try to incorporate the show. We're open to anything, but. Uh, once the games get going, we'll recap and, and, you know, do our format like we did last year. I think people enjoy that and we'll try to get some interviews. So thanks again. Awesome. Awesome.